global meeting, delegates at the Rio Plus 20 summit in Brazil have agreed a draft text that is supposed to lay out goals which would put the global economy on a more sustainable path. But the agreement's already been criticised for not being tough enough. Also on the agenda are ways in which large corporations can go green. Our science editor David Shookman has been given special access to the world's largest iron ore mine. That's at Carajas in the Amazon rainforest to see how it can be done. The great canopy of the Amazon rainforest towers over the landscape, except where beneath the ancient trees there's a very precious resource, gouged out from deeper and deeper underground, a rich deposit of iron ore. This is the largest mine of its kind anywhere on the planet. The giant machines toil around the clock. It's an ugly process in what used to be jungle, but the world wants the iron. This is the raw material that every modern economy is based on, the iron ore used to make steel. And to give you an idea of what's involved, this one massive truck carries about enough ore to make a couple of hundred cars. Demand is just rocketing, especially from China. The bigger this mine gets, the greater the impact on the natural world. Saplings of native trees are ready to be planted. The aim, to restore the rainforest. It's a very long-term challenge. And in fact, what we do, we actually research all the time to make sure that we have the right uh, seeds and the right species of plants that we can use afterwards to bring back nature. But the mine is due to push into new areas. We join a survey of what's most at risk, a lost world beneath the forest. We enter a cave teeming with bats, four different species of them. The survey is funded by the mining company, Vale, and Brazil's conservation agency agrees they are trying to be greener. Vale is really trying to operate sustainably. But that's a long way to go. In fact, for Vale, the iron comes first. There's much scepticism ahead of a major climate change conference in Brazil. The Rio Plus 20 summit gets underway on Wednesday, with the leaders of more than 100 countries expected to attend. But environmental campaigners say talks over a master plan that will be endorsed at the end of the week have already run into problems. Greenpeace says the 50-page document is unlikely to contain very many concrete plans because negotiators are removing all influential points. The progress that you hear about in press conferences is about progress to water down the text to avoid commitment and to, um, in reality governments are clearly here to do nothing and to commit to doing nothing. Summit organizers say the United Nations Environment Program will be strengthened and developing nations in particular will benefit but activists worry that the delicate global economy will be the perfect excuse to delay expensive environmental projects. The UN's own figures show in the past two decades the size of the world's urban population has nearly doubled, while carbon emissions and biodiversity loss have also risen sharply. Despite that urgency, many are skeptical Rio Plus 20 will achieve much, with leaders focused on the current state of the world economy. Environmental campaigners say priorities must change if we're to halt humanity's destruction of the planet. At the moment, we are in thrall to financial and economic systems. We are making them our masters instead of using finance and economy to help us achieve other long-term goals of prosperity and well-being, we're, we're the servants of the financial systems. The Rio summit is expected to focus on green technologies, the hope being such solutions will enable continued economic growth while at the same time preserving the environment. But critics say tougher rules for big business are needed. Most corporations in the world already have um, uh, an economic power which is above states. Shall we let them do anything they want or not? Shall we let them turn nature into a commodity because they need more space for financial markets now or not? 
Unlike previous summits, no legally binding treaty to protect the environment and eradicate poverty is anticipated, despite broad agreement that current consumption patterns are unsustainable.